We love our fish, and fish is a major part of the Trinbegonian diet and unique culture. 60% of all fishing in Trinidad and Tobago is conducted in the Gulf of Paria. The Gulf of Paria is a large expanse of water that lies between the western coast of Trinidad and the northern coast of Venezuela. It is semi-enclosed and extremely sheltered, lying just below the hurricane belt. It is also open to the Atlantic and Caribbean seas. The Gulf is fed nutrient-rich water from the Orinoco Delta and other rivers, resulting in the area having characteristically brackish water and numerous wetlands and mangroves along its borders. These unique features allow the Gulf to support vast and diverse marine fauna, notably large fish populations. Many species of fish use the area as breeding grounds and many permanent populations have developed within the area. The Gulf is a very important fishery for Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean region, and many individuals depend on the fish within the area. But how important or valuable is the fishing industry in this area? Fishing in the Gulf of Paria has a utilitarian value or direct use value. A direct use value arises due to the direct utilization of an ecosystem service and can be divided into two main groups. One, consumptive use value, which are resources that are locally consumed and typically not found in commercial marketplaces, such as wild meats or bush meat, local bush medicines or herbs, and fishes caught for personal consumption. These can be valued by calculating how much local people would have to pay for such products. And two, productive use value, or resources harvested for the purpose of trade on national and international markets, such as timber, furs, tree resins, and fish. The fishing industry accounts for 63 million TT dollars of the Trinidad and Tobago's GDP and represents 10% of the agricultural GDP. 4,220 metric tons of fish valued at 60 million TT are exported to earn foreign revenue. Fishing in the Gulf of Paria accounts for 60% of all fishing activity within Trinidad and Tobago and employs approximately 1,300 people with approximately over 50,000 dependents. They are an estimated 8,000 fishermen and of these, 90% state that fishing is their only source of income. These fishermen are also mainly from rural villages where fishing has become a part of life, with traditions being passed down from one generation to the next. Well, I'm, well, I'm my life, you know, I'm about 13 years, you know, since I was born, I used to 12, 13 years, and life has been long here, it's coconut, I'm fishing, so there's two choices, um, is either you're going to sea or you're going to coconut, so I, I choose the fishing walk. Since fish in the area benefits us, the question arises how long is the fishing industry in the Gulf of Paria going to last? And is it sustainable? Over the years, fishermen in the area have complained about difficulty finding fish and have reported lower catch sizes. Studies done by the FAO in the area have shown that over 75% of the people acknowledge changes in the fishing industry between 1984 and 1994 notably the reduction in the average fish size as well as local cat sizes. These findings point toward the threat of overfishing or overexploitation of fish within the area and fishermen blame trawling and lack of laws for the dwindling number of fish. Overexploitation, overharvesting is part of the evil quartet of drivers towards extinction. It is the extensive extraction of renewable resource to a point of diminishing returns. As fishing technology has improved, the fishing industry has become very efficient at harvesting fish and shellfish. The industrialization of the fishing industry and the implementation of trawlers along with the increasing world demand for seafood encourages people to extract more fish from oceans and rivers beyond the sustainable amount. This leads to exploitation and exhaustion of fish resources as fish populations cannot naturally recover and repopulate. The demand for fish is increased and at a fast rate resulting in decline in populations and eventual threat of extinctions to species. Trolling is a major contributor to overfishing. There are 157 registered Trinidadian trawlers working within the Gulf of Paria. And these trawlers are separated into five different classes based on their size. With the largest being 10.9 and 23.6 meters with a 15 meter trawl net. Trawling produces a large amount of bycatch, most juvenile fishes of many different species. The estimate of bycatch to shrimp in the late 1980s was 15 to 1, and in the early 
1990s was 12 to 1. These bycatch are usually discarded and cannot be returned to the sea since they are dead when trawler nets are brought up. Fishermen say that these estimated numbers of bycatch are much larger than reported. The big deep sea trawl eyes were already killing plenty too. When one deep sea trawl I pull up and he empty out the bag on top of the deck, the deck big like this whole area space here. They have offload and about a 10 wheeler truck full of small fish. I think they say it's like 35 small fish to one big shell. So a 10 wheeler load of small fish on top of that. They may just be taking all the shrimp and like the big fish and them size and things. Like five pound size and all the rest of just throw it over. One deep sea trawl half a month could kill more than a billion small fish. More than a billion small fish. All different species you're talking about, not one particular kind. All different kinds of redfish, plateau, pampan, carp, crab, everything. Let me just kill. When juveniles are removed from fish populations before reaching maturity and reproducing, there is a net reduction in population since there is no replacement for fishes that are being removed. Trawling thus poses a major threat to fish populations within the Gulf. The incidental harvesting of unwanted, untargeted species of age classes is an issue that poses challenges to fishery management and remains firmly on the fisheries and conservation agendas. But what is being done to avoid the devastating effects of over-exploitation? Trinidad and Tobago has many laws within their constitution to deal with this. One such law is the Hard Substrate Dismissals Fishery Law. This is legislation aimed at the dismissal hard substrate fishery, which prohibits the capture or sale of snapper less than 20.3 cm. It was recommended that mesh sizes be increased to maximize yield and to prevent overfishing and that biodegradable panels be utilized in the construction of fish pots. Most fishermen adhere to these laws, stating that they have indeed changed their net sizes. However, laws need to be put in place to address trawlers. The Venezuelan government has already banned trawling within the Gulf. Perhaps we too should follow suit and ban trawling within the area. This can ensure that small fishes do not get caught within nets, which can help restore fish populations. Fishing is a very important industry. It is part of the traditions and cultures of our people. It is also highly valuable to us and contributes highly to our economic growth and development. Thus, there is a need for change. It is up to us as citizens to protect and manage our fisheries, especially within the Gulf, so that our generation, as well as future generations, can benefit. Man. Yeah, it's moonshine.